Okay, so let's find this length right here, okay, represented by x plus 1 of this triangle. All right, so uh, obviously we have a triangle, and this side is 8, and this side is 10. But what is this side? Okay, and of course, it's uh, represented by this expression x plus 1. But what is this side right here? Well, I'm going to show you how to solve a problem like this. And this is very, very, very important. One of the most important things uh, that we study in mathematics has to do with how to solve a problem like this. This is this concept that we're going to be talking about has to uh, relates to these type of triangles. Okay, so it has to do with something like this. Of course, I'm giving you a little clues here. I'm going to explain this here in a second. But if you're like, yeah, I know what this is. I know what he's talking about. Well, then you know you got uh, you know you got the right idea here, right? You're like, yeah, he's probably talking about uh, right triangles. Yes, if he's if that's what you're thinking. That's excellent, okay? And we're going to kind of uh, go through uh, the, you know, approach to solve a problem like this. And it it's going to involve a bit of algebra, nothing too scary. So don't walk away. You're definitely going to learn something here about how to solve uh, triangle problems, specifically right triangle problems. And this is extremely important in mathematics, so it's something you definitely need to know. Okay, but uh, before we do that, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. Now, basically what I have is 100 plus different math courses. I have the big courses like Geometry, Algebra 2, Algebra 1. These are complete full curriculums. Uh, schools, if you use my programs, uh, people like homeschoolers that need to do independent study. So people completely take my courses, you know, construct grades from them and everything else. But I also have many, many test prep courses. So a lot of people are studying math uh, because they're uh, studying for a particular exam, SAT, GED, GRE, GMAT, um, you know, uh, teacher certification exam, nursing entrance exam, uh, whatever the case, so CLEP exam, Accuplacer um, you know, Alex exam. There's a ton of different uh, reasons to be studying math that do, you know are outside of actually formally taking a math course. But of course, I do have a lot of people that are taking, let's say, college algebra, and are just not clicking with their teacher's instruction, or just need more additional uh, help. Then they'll use my course. So, anyways, have a broad uh, catalog. So, what you, whatever your needs are, likely can cover them. Now, one thing you need to be doing for yourself. As a math student, I assume that you are if you're watching this video, is you got to follow the golden rule of math. And I've developed this over decades of teaching a uh, subject, and that is this. Uh, those students who take great math notes almost always end up with great math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students who don't take math notes, who take sloppy math notes, typically look like this at the end of their math course. They don't like their grades. Okay. Now I'm like, well, you know, let me see your notes. And they're like, mm, notes, what's that? I'm not even taking notes. My best friend's in his class. He takes way better notes than I do. I just look at his notes because I got to keep up with my social media. And uh, I like doing my homework for my other classes in math class. Listen, I get it. I was a student one time. I made all the mistakes and then some. And thank goodness there was no cell phones back in the good old days because I would have, mm, I don't even know if I would have graduated high school. Listen, I get it, right? There's a lot of distraction uh, that's going on. And uh, you know, the main thing idea is this, you've got to stay focused. And evidence of you staying focused is taking notes that keeps you engaged, right? And it's also retention. Okay, so this is like, the way you're going to get this information into your head is through note taking. And if you take notes, you're going to end up looking like that at the end of your math course, right? So work on your math notes, critical, critical, critical. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can check those out by just following the links in the description of this video. All righty then. So let's get into this problem. Indeed, we are talking about uh, right triangles. And let's quickly review something about right triangles. So here, I'll sketch out a right triangle. All right, so this little notation, this little tiny square in this box, indicates that this is 90 degrees, okay? So this is 90 degrees. Something you, uh, you should know about a triangle is that there's a, a total of 180 degrees between this angle, this angle, and this angle is 180 degrees total, okay? So if this is 90 degrees, the sum of these two angles 
has to be 90 degrees. So that's just some general knowledge about triangles. But when we're talking about right triangles, that we're talking about specifically those triangles that have one of their angles is 90 degrees. Now, once that's the situation, you're like, oh, okay, now I got a right triangle. Well, something now applies, okay, to right triangles. And this is critical, and that's the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. This you want to lock into your long-term memory. You're critically critically uh, uh, important in mathematics. And basically, it means this, okay? We have A, B, and C. These are the lengths of the sides of the triangle. Now, C, this side here, will always be the longest length of a right triangle. And it's opposite of whatever this little square is, whatever the corner, the 90 degrees at, opposite of that is this length. And you can just visually tell it's the longest side of the triangle. That's uh, called the hypotenuse, and it will always be the variable C, okay, when we're talking about uh, the Pythagorean theorem. So these two sides here are the other sides, the uh, other two shorter sides. And you can have A or B or B or A. It doesn't make a difference. It's not going to you know, mess us up in a problem. But this is always, the hypotenuse is always this C, okay? And what we're saying is if we square this side, okay, and then we add it plus, okay, the square of this side, all right, that's going to be equal to the square of that one side, all right? So uh, you need to understand the Pythagorean theorem. I have tons of videos on it in my geometry, algebra playlist. So, um, you know, this is kind of... Uh, a basic problem with a little bit of a twist because we're going to be using some algebra, but let's just quick, let's do a real quick problem here. And some of you will be like, okay, I get how this works. So let's say I have three and four and I got this little right triangle and I say, this is X and don't get thrown off by, oh, that's not C. No, we're just, this is the missing side. I'm trying to find this side. Well, how can I how can I determine that? Well, as long as you have two sides of a right triangle, you can always get the other one. So that's going to be A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So you can say this side is A or this side is B. If I put this as A and this B, it doesn't make a difference because this is always C. Okay? And it's the missing length. It's, yeah, I'm represented as a variable X, but don't get uh, too, you know, stressed out about that, right? It still represents this C here. So... Okay, so A is 4, I'm going to square that, plus B is 3, I'll square that, and that's going to be equal to X squared, or C squared, okay? We'll, pull it, we'll plug in an X squared here just uh, to kind of be consistent, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and do this math. So 4 squared is 16, plus uh, 3 squared is 9, that's equal to X squared. 16 plus 9 is 25. So 25 is equal to x squared. Now I got to know some basic algebra. So x squared is equal to 25. I want to know what x is equal to. So how can I solve for this? Well, I could just take the square root of both sides. And the square root of 25 is, in fact, it's plus or minus 5. But obviously, we don't want a negative number here. So it, the answer that we're looking for is x is equal to 5. Okay, so x is equal to 5. And we found the missing length. Now, I could have the missing length here. Here it doesn't make a difference, but this is a basic introduction to the Pythagorean theorem. All right. Now, what we're going to be doing here uh, is a little bit more involved, but the principles are still the same. Okay. So here is our problem. All right. So what we're going to be doing is still using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. Because I know I have a right triangle. Right. So if I square this side. All right plus the square of this side, that's going to be equal to the square of that side. So let's go ahead and set that up using an, uh, an equation. All right. All right, so this side squared is 8 squared, plus, obviously I did the work here in advance, I just kind of uh, trying to make this video a little bit uh, shorter. So this side squared, 8 squared, plus this side, this side is x plus 1, but we're just going to square it, okay? That's going to be equal to this side squared, 10 squared. All right. Now, at this point in time in the problem, our job now is to solve this equation. All right. And so if you're able to set this up, but you can't solve this equation, well, listen, you're on the right path. All right. So don't 
you know, give yourself some credit. They're like, okay, I understand that, but I'm a little bit hesitant on the rest of this. Well, let me go ahead and walk through how to solve this. Uh, this is a basic quadratic equation, and then uh, you'll see how this uh, problem was uh, done. All right, so 8 squared is 64. I have x plus 1 squared. I'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. 10 squared is 100. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to get this by itself on one side of the equation. And uh, if you need to know, uh, if you're struggling here, check out all my uh, videos on qu solving quadratic equations. But basically, I'm going to subtract 64 from both sides of the equation. And I'm going to end up with x uh, squared plus 1. I'm uh, oh, sorry. x plus 1 squared is equal to 36. Okay. So just like x squared, let's take something like x squared is equal to 36. Just like what I just did here previously, x squared is equal to 25. I could take the square root of both sides, right? Or the square root of both sides and x squared is equal to 36. But I have x plus 1 squared is equal to 36. That's okay. I could still take the square root of both sides. Okay, I'm trying to, you know, simplify this. Now, if I take the square root of x plus 1 squared, it's x plus 1. Okay, because x plus 1 times itself, x plus 1 is x plus 1 squared, right? So if I take the square root of that, it's just x plus 1. So now I have x plus 1 is equal to the square root of 36 is positive and negative 6, right? Remember, the square root of a real number, the square root of 25 is not just 5, okay? It's positive and negative. Okay, again, these are uh, concepts um, that have to deal with uh, square roots and uh, quadratic equations. Okay, so I have x plus 1 it's either going to be equal to a positive 6 or x plus 1 will be equal to a negative 6. So if I solve these last remaining equations, I have x is equal to 5, right? Subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. And over here, I have x is equal to negative 7. So let's think about it. I have a triangle here. Is the length going to be negative 7? No, we're not going to have negative lengths on a triangle. So our answer is x is equal to 5. Now, you, if you were just going very quickly and you, you were like so excited, you're like, teacher, teacher, I got the answer. X is equal to five. Guess what? I would have to take some points off and then immediately your expression would be like this. You're like, what, what, what? Wait, I did it perfectly. I watched all the videos on YouTube. I did it. No, no, no. You got to be careful here, right? Yeah, X is equal to five, but the length here is X plus one, okay? It's not five. Right, it's x plus 1, which is 6. All right, so if we, this is 6. If I go 6 squared plus 8 squared, let's just do this real quick. Is that going to be equal to 10 squared? 6 squared is 36, 36. 8 squared is 64. And 10 squared is 100. And 36 plus 64 is 100. 100 equals 100. So this checks out. If you had 5, you would have 25 plus 64 and, you know, you would be in trouble, okay? So always focus. That's the name of the game when you're doing math. It's just like driving a car. Think about it. Here's the, here's the road. There's the lane. Okay, everything is good. Listen, you've been going 100 miles, 200 miles. doesn't make a difference. As soon as you stop focusing on the road ahead, bad things can happen, all right? It's no different than math. Yeah, it's easy to make a mistake, and uh, a big part of Doing mathematics is remaining focused. It's a discipline, okay? So that's why I'm a big stickler about this stuff because, you know, nobody wants to see things like that, you know? Uh, and I've seen those expressions. I'm sure I gave many of those expressions. Man, eh, maybe not because in high school, I was one of those kind of, yeah, I know better, da, 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 da. Uh, but later down the line, you know, I was able to, you know, uh, see you know, the trends. And the trends is this. Those students who stay engaged, taking great math notes, doing their homework, asking questions, you, you're you going to do well, okay? You, you just don't get, you don't do, you don't get a good, good grade in math by luck, okay? That shouldn't be your strategy. So don't be surprised if, you, you know, you're struggling in math, but you haven't been doing the work, right? You're not going to get lucky learning this stuff. And there's, you know, not this level of math, you know, some, there might be some people in the more basic levels that can kind of, you know, not study so much, but there's too much coming your way in algebra, geometry, and, and there's just too much information. 
So um, my job is to help you learn this stuff in a clear and understandable way. That's my my mission always. So if you learn something, you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, I, uh, this wasn't a waste of time. Uh, I got something out of this video. Well, if that's the case, please consider smashing that like button. I would appreciate that. And please consider subscribing. I've uh, been on YouTube for a long time. Already have hundreds and hundreds of videos, organized various playlists on my channel, basic to advanced math, all there for you. Okay. Um, now, if you want my best help, you already know where to go. You just follow the links in the description of this video. All right. With that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.